So I'm Chris, and this is my identical twin sister, Marin. We have the same genes, but today we're going to look beyond that. So, everyone loves twins, especially the really cute, fat-faced ones like this. Um, yeah, so even as twins ourselves and having to ensure 27 years' worth of stereotypical, cliché twin questions, we also really love twins to the point of actually high-fiving every single new pair that we meet, as if high-fiving was just reserved for us. Um, kind of leaving bystanders wondering what was all the fuss about and I think she could probably say firsthand how uncool it is to not be part of the twin club. <laughs> yeah. Um, people often focus on the similarities when it comes to identical twins, um, especially the freaky ones. Um, and whilst you're probably all wondering the same thing, we're not telepathic, we do not feel each other's pain and we don't finish each other's sentences most of the time. <laughs> So we grew up in a small town in Germany um, and we attended the same school, we had the same friends, wore the same clothes but different colours. Um, but at some point there was a stage where we actually did want to be a little bit different. Um, I had a weird fascination for polar bears and Ryan really liked penguins. Um, not just different animals, different poles as, as well. So um, <laughs> we, we collected all sorts of ornaments and we, we, we collected all the um, newspaper and magazine articles about them. And um, whilst our friends were probably collecting pictures of boy bands and making cool mixtapes, we didn't really care because we had each other. And if Maren thought this behaviour was really cool, so did I. Um, and it became a little bit of an obsession. Um, but we kind of felt there was an element of competition going on. Yep. Do you remember when you wouldn't let me wear contact lenses uh, because you wanted to be different and I adopted the name Marin Magnifiers? <laughs> yeah. And you're more into the older man, aren't you? <laughs> and you like baby faces. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, so people often talk about the twin bond um, and that really came into play for us when we moved from Germany to England when we were 11 years old after our parents divorced. And over here, we seem to be a bit of a novelty, and um, we soon adopted the name the German Twins. Um, and, and we went to the same school again, and we, sh we shared the same friends, and at, at school in sixth form, we did the same courses, came up with identical results, and um, we did rely on each other a lot during that whole period, and it's not until now that we realise just how important that twin bond really was. And then after school... We, uh, we decided, we, well, we didn't really know what we wanted to do. We, we had no desire to go straight off to university, so we went to two warmer climates in Australia and travelled around for nine months and worked a bit. <laughs> and a year later, um, we, we knew that we were both ready to spend a bit more time apart from each other, and I guess deep down we knew we really needed this to become two separate people. Um, the first time we did spend a time apart, and I suppose we created our own identities when I decided um, to go and study... Um, at university 300 miles away in Cornwall and Chris continued travelling. Um, this is the first time we really understood what it was like to be a singleton but we brought the fact that we were twins up at every given opportunity. So our differences developed and our interests developed in different areas and um, I was dreaming of travelling the world and working and Myron's interests were in garden and design and it seemed that we were starting to grow up and, and although we spoke regularly we're starting to live separate lives. And then the biggest difference was unwelcomely wedged between us, and that was cancer. So I was diagnosed with breast cancer just over four years ago, um, at the very stupid age of 23. And um, a year before that, I'd been to the GP with a very lumpy boob. And that was put down to my hormones because of my age. So after that, uh, I went to Beijing for a while because um, I'd just been told I was fine and that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So, so when I was over there, I actually still realised that this lumpy boob was still there and it was actually, the pain was actually sometimes keeping me up at night. And then the day after I got back from my trip, I went back to the GP, who was, just, who was actually even more dismissive than the first one I saw. And it wasn't until the third trip, a bolshy mother, and finally seeing a consultant that I was diagnosed with secondary breast cancer. So it was incurable because it had already spread beyond my breast. So being told I had breast cancer wasn't actually the hardest thing. 
it was telling Marin that I had breast cancer. That was the hardest thing. When Chris told me, I felt a whole combination of emotions from anger to fear and frustration, just so frustrated that we were led to believe that this lump was nothing and that it was, it was found late. And um, I hadn't even contemplated at this point that I was now at a greater risk of getting the disease as well. And it wasn't until Chris told me that her doctor wanted me to be checked out as soon as possible that that thought really came into my mind. Thankfully, I'm all clear. But our twinship took quite a knock when the common question that we always came to kind of expect changed from this to this. Suddenly, um, our, our twinship had been taken away from us, basically, by this, by this cancer, and it was probably the most hurtful part of the diagnosis. Um, we'd clearly taken it for granted, and for the time that Chris's appearance changed, we, I really, really missed it. So... We decided um, that out of this, you know, seemingly pretty crap situation, we wanted to do something good with it and to focus our minds on something actually that could, could change the way we perceive this disease. Um, and we soon realised that none of us, no, 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 no one had ever told us that we could get breast cancer at a young age and no one was telling us to check ourselves. Those are two fundamental things that then added to the fact I had two very ignorant GPs. Um, led to my late diagnosis and that seemed really really ridiculous to us so we wanted to do something about that we set up a charity called Copperfield and um, the aim of that is to ensure that all breast cancers are detected at a time when they could still be treated successfully so we go about that in all sorts of fun and interesting ways <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we scale the country up and, and we do all sorts of events and wherever there's basically young people, we speak to them about checking their boobs and we're the only breast cancer charity that is purely aimed at getting awareness and getting young people to start checking their boobs from a younger age. Okay, the slides are just There we go. Pictures. And, and sometimes we get some famous faces to help us along the way. Um, Cancer has had quite a profound impact on our twinship. And I suppose the positive has been really that we have become closer and we get to spend a lot more time together now um, through the work that we do with Copperfield. And we're constantly masterminding and dreaming up new ideas and we share the same level of passion and determination. And our, our, we've got a far heightened awareness of our outlook and we just, we just want to, we are longing to lead a meaningful life. And I suppose we've also adopted much more of a why not attitude. So I guess everyone's wondering the same question. Why did I get breast cancer and my identical twin sister didn't? Um, I was tested for all the known breast cancer genes, BRCA1, BRCA2, P53, um, and they all, they, they all came back negative. So um, that obviously didn't help us in finding out. Um, my grandma, our grandma had breast cancer in her 30s and she went on to die in her 70s of unrelated causes. Um, it was never really talked about in our family um, and it certainly didn't alert us to checking ourselves or anything like that from a younger age because it was just one other person. So that also didn't give us any clues as to why I got breast cancer. So we've been told that there are numerous reasons for why people get breast cancer and Tim was um, speaking about this earlier. Um, but... You know, we, we, we've looked at our lives and, um, you know, maybe Chris told one too many porky pies when she was younger. Maybe she took a sip from a toxic river whilst we were playing in a nearby woods. Or to us, maybe, just maybe, Chris was always meant to get breast cancer. Um, and if you'd asked us before we were diagnosed, and we both believe this, which out of us three sisters would be diagnosed with breast cancer, we both agree that it would be Chris. And as odd or even sick as that may sound, to us it just seems like the roles that we've been cast in this theatrical performance known as cancer just seems very suited to the people that we are. As well as this, Chris was always a sickly child. She was off from school for days on end with a virus that doctors couldn't diagnose. Appendicitis, wisdom teeth, a lot. And um, she was always one for worrying and over-analyzing. So to us it just seemed that if anyone was going to get it, it would be her. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, and although 
her hair's back. We look a little bit like twins again. Chris has got a stronger identity because, because of the cancer. And we wouldn't want the cancer necessarily to define who she is. Inevitably, because of what we do now, there's, it has become the stronger focus of her life. And although only one of us was diagnosed, sometimes it does feel like both of us have got it. Of course, I'm not the one that has to go through the physical challenge of having the disease, but the mental strain is often felt by us both and often heightened by idiotic questions um, such as, is she going to live as long as you? Which I think actually deserves the most moronic question award. Um, how do you prepare yourself for a question like that, let alone find the strength to um, actually know how to answer it? So, so I just simply found um, the best way to answer it was by saying, how long are you going to live for? So, um, Myron and I were born identical twins, but yet one thing has sort of challenged our identical status. And um, we, we now, because of the cancer, lead a really happy life. And, um, yeah, um, one sec. Um, and... Um, so, if, if we, if we are, so, we are identical twins, and... Um, I've got the cancer, and and should then and, and it wasn't necessarily genes that brought it to, to for me to have cancer. So should twins then uh, and and their traits and characteristics and behaviours be identified by their genes? So should, if if mine had been diagnosed with cancer, would we be leading similar lives now? We don't think so. I think if roles had been reversed, neither of us would have been able to, would have been equipped to deal with them. So um, we are where we are today because of who we are. And so despite the cancer, we're now doing a job that we really love um, and get to save lives and um, live a much more meaningful life because of it. And little did we know that five years ago when we were actually trying to live quite separate lives after university, that it would be cancer that would steer our lives back together again. So... I think there's a lot more to identical twins than our genetic makeup. And final thought of today is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hanging. check your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Most because if nothing else, go home and check your boobs today. Thank you very much. <laughs>